Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a fun project for you today. For years in my trunk shows I've been traveling with this pinwheel quilt and I've never done a tutorial on it and a pinwheel is one of the easiest and quickest blocks to look amazing without working too hard. So let me show you how to do this. So to make this quilt, you're gonna need one charm pack. This quilt right here is just one charm pack, and we have used Arrival of Winter by Sandy Gervais for Riley Blake. You're gonna need some background. We use two and a quarter yards. That takes up your sashing and your first inner border. You're going to need an outer border, one and a quarter yards. And because it's a smaller quilt, I did a nice big six inch border out here. For the backing, you're gonna need three and three quarter yards. And we use this beautiful piece right here. Let me show you what it looks like. It's just gorgeous. Look with the birds and the snowflakes. Isn't that pretty? She's so talented, Sandy is. And, um, and then of course, three quarters of a yard for your binding. And it will be helpful if you have a squaring tool. And I like the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer. So this is a half square triangle quilt and I love half square triangle quilts and I love pinwheels. They're just happy, they're darling. But when you put pinwheels all together, you lose the pinwheel. So I like to sash them. Now sashing for me has always presented a problem because when you lay those rows together and you open it up and you pin it and you make sure the seams are lined up just right and you sew it, then when you open it, it's all a little off and it just drives me nuts. So I came up with a way to make this really easy and I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some five inch squares of background fabric and we're gonna take one of our five inch squares. Remember, you only need one charm pack for this and we're gonna sew all the way around the outside of this. So let's go ahead and do that because we're gonna make half square triangles the easy way. And you can do this with any size square. My stuff is all, um, it's all pre-cut based, but literally you can do it with any size square. All right. So now if you're gonna square this with a square or a block lock, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna cut it in half both directions, press them open and square it to three inches. I'm going to use the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer and this is trimmer B and it's gonna, I'm measuring to three inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay it right on that seam line and I'm gonna cut this just like this and just like this and then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna cut it again and if I can get it just right, it will line right up on that edge and I will only have to make one cut like that. And we'll do it again. This is a little hack for the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer. Here, move that out of the way and trim down here. And then one more. So I'm gonna line my stitch line with their stitch line, three inches. And I always forget to do the little points right here. I always forget that. But it really helps on pinwheels because there's a lot of fabric that comes together all at once. Now if you forget to trim your points like I did, you can just simply trim them like this. Just go ahead and trim them. It's worth the time. They get all taken care of. Make sure I got all of mine there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna press these open like this. All four, we're pressing to the dark side. If you want, and you should probably, set your seam. Somebody said, why doesn't Jenny set her seams anymore? <laughs> I just forget to. <laughs> I don't know that it makes that big of a difference, but it was something that a lot of people are taught. And so if you want to, go ahead. I have a little point here I didn't get clipped, so I'm gonna clip it right now. So putting a pinwheel together can sometimes be a challenge for somebody who's angrily challenged like I am. So I have a mantra. I do light, dark, light, dark, all seams to the center. So as I'm putting this in, I look and if my seam has to go to the center and it has to be light or dark, it has to have the opposite color by it. When you put a pinwheel together, you wanna set it right there and make them all the same way. Otherwise, you'll have pinwheels going this way and this way, and you don't want that. You want them all going the same way. So let me see how mine are set up there. Yep, just like this. So I'm going to turn mine, I'm gonna put mine together, just how it's laid out on the board right here. And if I do this and I sew these two and these two, it will be ready to put together in halves 
like this. All right, so now I'm gonna open this up and make sure it still looks like a pinwheel and that we got it right. It does. So I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna sew this together. Now you're gonna do this 42 times. That's it, just one charm pack worth. You need a, a, a background square and a charm pack square for each one. You're gonna sew all the way around it and you're gonna cut them into three inch pinwheels, just like this. And then this block should measure five and a half and it does. Now, the trick to this sashing is that every single block gets a sashing. So we're gonna put a sashing on here like this and we're gonna, I mean, every single pinwheel, we're gonna put this sashing on. So you're gonna take your two and a half inch background strip, two and a half by five and a half inch rectangle and sew it on there. Put your pinwheel on the bottom because that part does have some bias and you'll want to make sure that your top piece is anchoring it down. So you're gonna sew this sashing a quarter of an inch and you're gonna sew it to the right side of every block. We're gonna go ahead and finger press this down. And I have some more blocks here that are sewn together. So take a look at these, like this. So every single block has a sashing sewn to the right side. And you sew it to the next and the next and the next. So every row looks like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna have seven rows of that. So our row is gonna look like this. So because you've put your sashing on the right-hand side of every block, on this row, you think to yourself, oh, that doesn't work for the next row, but it does. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip that sashing around. So this row ends with a sashing. This row starts with a sashing. This row ends with a sashing. This row starts with a sashing. And when you go to sew this sashing in right here, it's just a long two and a half inch strip. I have one right here. And you're just gonna sew that all the way along there because it doesn't match with anything. You don't have to line it up with anything. It's just gonna go together so quick and easy. Then you're gonna put this border in out here, two and a half inch border all the way around the quilt. You're gonna end with a nice big six inch border out here and you're gonna have a pinwheel party happening. That's the name of the pattern, pinwheel party. It's 57 by 62. The quilting pattern we used on it is called Christmas Paisley. And it's just a really cute, nice little floral. It can, it can go florally or Christmassy, whatever you want. But this is a really easy way to make a pinwheel quilt without ever having to match up a seam. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the pinwheel party from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.